The RV Show USA is brought to you by Rockwood, building better RVs, making smarter RVers. And hello again, everybody. Alan Warren, the RV wingman with you, keeping the bogeys off your tail and steering you to the best RV dealers in the country. This is the RV Show USA, the most listened to, the most talked about show on radio and social media about the RV lifestyle. On today's show, we're going to find out just what kind of folks actually build RVs. You may have heard horror stories about a culture of alcohol and drug abuse. Well, we're going to get one man's take on the subject and see what he thinks. We're going to run on over to Houston, Texas and connect with Diana from PPL Motorhomes for part two of maximizing the time that you spend at RV shows. And Cannon Combs from over at RV Station will be checking in. We'll get a dealer's perspective on some of the things that he thinks buyers should keep in mind at an RV show. And uh, again, from the dealer's perspective, so we got a lot of stuff going on. Let's see, uh, let's see what's happening in the way in news. All right, so in the headlines, let's begin with an update to the tragic story of the New Hampshire couple, James and Michelle Butler. They were brand new to living full-time in an RV. They began their full-time journey back in July, worked their way from where they lived up in New England all the way down to Texas, staying in touch with their family and friends on a pretty regular basis, that is, until their communication stopped back in October. Two weeks later, their bodies were found, buried in a shallow, sandy grave on a beautiful, quiet, very lonely stretch of beach along the Texas Gulf Coast. Now, their bodies were found, but uh, no RV, no pickup truck, poof, gone, nothing, nothing but the butler's bodies in a shallow grave. Now, the cops... You know, they ruled it a homicide. They didn't say much, at least not while the investigation was going on. They got their tip, uh, got a tip that a truck was spotted. It looked just like the truck they had at a border crossing going into Mexico. And shortly thereafter, Adam Williams and his girlfriend, Amanda Nover, were arrested. Now, so uh, just this past week, new charges were filed against them, including tampering with evidence and possession of a firearm by a felon. Strange thing is that they have not been charged with murder, at least not yet. In a sense, I think that kind of baffles me. I mean, it seems pretty obvious. But on the other hand, um, because of the way the law works, I'm hopeful that there's a strategy to getting a confession out of them or at least finding uh, some more evidence so they can get a really good, solid conviction. From what I understand, the new charges were filed as kind of a legal maneuver to keep them behind bars until the prosecutor collects more evidence and they go to trial. So, hey, speaking of, speaking of behind bars, did you hear about the RVer out in Oregon that uh, was staying at his friend's house with his permission, with his RV? It was hooked up to his friend's electricity. Again, he was staying with permission, minding his own business when the homeowner's daughter showed up. Well, it turns out that the daughter is the one that pays daddy's electric bill. But you know what? She was not very happy. So what does she do? Well, she does what any normal person would do. She grabbed an axe and, <laughs> as they say, she gave the uh, gave the RV forty whacks. And after she got after she got finished busting out the windows out of the motorhome, she took after the RV owner. Apparently, she whacked him pretty good too. Uh, not with the sharp side of the axe though, just with the flat side. So she took it easy on him. Now the axe wielding woman is now going to spend a little bit of time behind bars a little bit over a year and she gets to think about what she did as for the motor home and the owner hey nobody knows nobody knows so you know when you hear stories like this uh it's no wonder that some folks look down their noses at rvers and um to me that is just fine i think that there's a there's a bumper crop of people who rv and campgrounds are pretty well full right now if many more people find out how great RV and camping is, how much more fun they can have in their RV, I think it's going to get even more crowded. So anyway, I, I, I'm sitting there watching TV the other day. I see this Carvana commercial come on. You seen it? It's the one where you can buy a car from a vending machine. That's what they say. Their slogan is, uh, car buying has never been easier. Is it just me or does that seem just a little bit weird? I mean... Who buy a car without test driving it first, without seeing it? I wonder if many people do. I guess they do. They advertise a lot. Anyway, what's next? Buying an RV the same way, or maybe, maybe just buying online. No dealer, no nothing. Just drive on up to the plant, back on up, hitch on up, and go. 
Well, as crazy as it sounds, I'll just bet you that somebody is going to do this. They are. They're going to at least try. I mean, we live in a, I want it now, I want a lot of it culture. Not only do we want it now and lots of it, we want it trouble-free, we want it cheap, preferably free. Now, that's not asking too much, is it? You know, as a campground owner, part of me absolutely loves it as a business. I mean, I love it. My wife and I love it. Every once in a while, I, uh, I just shake my head and say, what is it about some people? They don't listen. They don't think. They don't care. Well, they actually do care, just not about you. And uh, they care about themselves. They don't care about the rules. They don't care about you. We're all being pulled in so many different directions. Keeping somebody's attention for very long has never been more difficult. When it comes to RVs and RVing, taking the time to learn about your RV is so important. It can make the difference between loving an activity that will become a, a lifelong passion and throwing it in the towel because you hate it. it. never ceases to amaze me how people will consume hundreds of hours of YouTube videos about RV and about the 10 worst parts of this, or this happened to me, or I am so pissed video. They'll spend countless hours consuming empty, shallow drama, and then they say that they didn't have time to learn the things about how they all worked on their RV. Kind of like living on a diet that's all junk food, empty calories, and then we wonder why we don't have any energy. If I could change one thing about RVers, it's that they would truly take the time to learn about their RV, about the RV maintenance, about RV etiquette in the campground. If all RVers would take the time to learn the basics, you'd see a lot less rants on Facebook and a lot more happy campers. I don't want to make anybody angry, but the truth is, at least as I see it, is that many of the YouTubers who are telling you how great full-time RVing is will not be full-timing in five or six years. Many will realize that producing videos, good videos, is a lot of work. And that work cuts into the time that they can enjoy while they're actually camping and RVing. For me, I, I used to love fishing. I did. I thought I'd really love it if I made a career out of it. I did. I loved it for a while. But as time passed, my love for fishing slowly faded like a, I guess like a, an ember going away from a campfire. It took me retiring from the TV fishing show business to finally fall in love with fishing all over again and get that feeling I had about it when I was a boy. The point of my rambling, I guess, is that RVing and camping are fun. They are. And they're best enjoyed by those who don't take the shortcut to everything. All these fails, all these mistakes that you see people making on YouTube, most of them could have been avoided if they would have slowed down and thought things through. Think about what they're doing. I'm as guilty as anybody, I guess, of trying to hurry up the learning process, but it's really the, the process we need to embrace. Remember in the Karate Kid movie? Remember Mr. Miyogi? He had daniel son, painting a fence, waxing a car, doing all kinds of chores. Seemed to be menial chores. Danielson just wanted to learn karate. But he was learning the slow way, the best way. If you want to learn how to RV, or rather if you want to learn how to love to RV, take your time, study it, buy from a great dealer who will help you because you are going to need some help. Take your time. We may live in a world where we want what we want, when we want it, but take it slow in RVing. Enjoy the journey. Listen to smart people. Avoid the drama YouTube channels. And realize that most mistakes can be avoided if we just take our time and listen. Learning about your RV is uh, it's a fun kind of learning, too. It doesn't have to be learned the hard way. Becoming a happy RVer doesn't take place overnight. And there is a learning curve. In the beginning, when you're a newbie, it can seem overwhelming. But take your time. Stay away from the drama and empty calories of the next, oh, my God, YouTube video. And surround yourself with those who are smart, those who don't make many mistakes, those who've been RVing and loving it for a long time. Not just the pretty people with the next Watch Me Do Stuff YouTube channel. All right, a couple of things to mention before we hit the break. Time's running out for your chance to win a 2020 Forest River 196 R-Pod. It'll be raffled off on Valentine's Day. The cost 10 bucks. 10 bucks a ticket. You'll not only have a chance to win the R-Pod, but you'll be supporting a great charity. Learn more at girlcamper.com. 
top of the page. Click on it where it says Girl Camper Charity Raffle. I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman, back with more after this.